Good afternoon, everyone. I, I hope you had time to eat some lunch um, before we start uh, this afternoon session. This is the sixth hearing of the 187th period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And this hearing is entitled Parental Alienation Law in Brazil. And it was requested by the Grupo Voce de Angos, Maria de la Pena Institute, CLADEM, Brazil, Regional CLADEM, National Human Rights Movement and other organizations. My name is Margaret May McCauley, and I am the president of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights. And with me this afternoon are the following commissioners. The first vice president and rapporteur for the rights of children and adolescents, Commissioner Esmeralda Arisamina de Troitino. The rapporteur for Brazil, Commissioner Julissa Mantilla and Commissioner Roberta Clark, who is the second vice president of the commission. Also present are the executive secretary, Tania Renault, and the deputy executive secretary for monitoring, Maria Claudia Polido and the Special Rapporteur for Economic, Social, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, Soledad Garcia Munoz. I first give you our most cordial greetings, and that is to the state representatives who are here and to the civil society requesters. And I also greet cordially those who have joined us online to witness um, and listen to the entire proceedings. So let me start first by um, informing you of the allocation of time. Civil society, 20 minutes. The state, 20 minutes. The in Inter-American Commission panel, 20 minutes. And then civil society will then have uh, time to reply in um, for 12 minutes. And the state will also have time to reply for 12 minutes. And the closing of the session will be done by the commission in six minutes or less. Um, civil, the objective of the meeting is to present an overview of the parental alienation law in force in Brazil, particularly with respect to the illegitimate use of the figure of parental alienation syndrome against women who allege gender-based violence or violence against their children in legal proceedings. With that said, I, civil society, you have the floor. So please comment. Hello. É, boa, boa tarde, boa tarde a todos. Good todos. afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to greet the. Um, President of the Commission, Margaret May Macaulay, and all the persons present and the representatives of the state and the organizations of the civil society and all the people participating of this public hearing. We had, we have an intervention order, so we are going to respect that order so as to respect the time allocated efficiently. So I'm going to pass the floor to the first organization. Perdón, hemos perdido el audio. 
Sorry, we lost the audio. É, a organização Vozes de, Vozes de Anjo. The organization Vozes de Anjo will speak first. Pero parece no estar presente la, la asociación. It seems that the association is not present. Because time goes by. Carlos, would you confirm? Okay. So I'm going to call upon Uniji for their intervention, for their words. Can I start then? Uniji? Yes, I am representing Uniji. Can I start? Olá, tá me ouvindo? Boa tarde. Sim. Posso Good iniciar? afternoon. Posso, só para confirmar, estão me ouvindo? Sim, estamos. Can you ouvindo. hear me? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I didn't know. Okay, so I will start. Good afternoon, everybody. I am here as re representative of Unigi. I worked in hundreds of proceedings that involve violence against women, so I would like to thank you for this forum, which is very important for us all representative of human rights representatives in Brazil. I could verify the impact of these uh, parental alienation law. There was an inversion of the situation of women who report situations of violence. First, women were treated as protectors or custodians of their children, but after the uh, sanction of the parental alienation law, they are treated as uh, liars. There was a specific event that called my attention. I was with a woman, she almost died by, oh, he, she was almost um, assassinated by her couple. The aggressor was condemned with a judgment, definite judgment. And in spite of that, the women, the woman had to, re, to go to court as if she was the one who was alienating the, ch the child. And uh, based uh, as from that moment, I received many women and um, these law has been used as a strategy by um, children abusers and there is also a national document issued which is advising against his and the decisions taken in the families are based on myth or false premises which are those premises Oh, these uh, premise that they there was no uh, harassment or there was not abuse. And we know that the evidence appears in 24 hours. And the results, the positive results are appear after nine hours. There is also a myth that if the ch child does not reject the aggressor, then this is false and therefore the mother is alienating. Or if there is lack of e evidence, the mother is alienating or there is a worse myth, the myth of false memory, which was already disregarded in Europe, in the US, but it's still uh, reigns in Brazil as if the woman could 
incorporate or implant false memories to the children, the, the child, and therefore she is considered alienating. Some families do not have uh, gender trainings and these processes are quickly uh, dealt with in relation to the abuse proceedings. So there are proceedings which the uh, wom woman is taken as alienating before the criminal proceeding for abuse ends. So in this context in which Brazil is one of the most violent countries in the world, there are um, 33 percent of uh, violence who are conducted against women in our country, 61 percent of abuse against children practiced by known people, it is necessary to say that this parental alienation law constitutes a defense to, to defend men in this country. That is why I am part of this movement defending women, and that is why I'm representing Unides. I would like to underscore the importance of uh, the involvement of an international organization in this topic. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Thank you. The UBM now. Good afternoon to everyone. I would like to congratulate you on this hearing and I would like to say that this is very important for us Brazilian women, the violations that affect us and how the law is used to increase those violations and I can say that that torture against us women, it is not possible to believe that Brazil continues to maintain violence against women and children in our country. And this law fosters abusive fathers, aggressors to appropriate their children and that have been prosecuted that are going through processes, proceedings because of the violence they have inflicted on women and using this law for their benefit. These are very painful cases and the justice, the judiciary reproduces this and sometimes allows for a shared custody or they change custody and they give, they grant it to abusers. And in Brazil, we still have a society that is a sexist and patriarchal. There is nothing scientific to guarantee to support this law. We urgently need to reveal, repeal this law to protect women in our country, children and adolescents. Thank you for the opportunity, and you can count on the UBM to fight for the repeal of this law. Thank you, the Instituto Maria da Peña. I cannot see the representative of the Institute. Gladen, you have the floor now. Uh, I have a representative in the room. Aysu Maluta. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? They have let me know that uh, some uh, they did not receive the link and were not able to join the meeting. 
I am a representative of the Colectivo Maisdan Luta. I am Luz. I would like to thank you, uh, thank the Commission for this invitation. And our group was created in 2016. It is made up by moms from different parts of the country who have suffered threats or uh, have lost custody of their children. They have been threatened uh, and may lose custody. Some already lost custody. And these moms were trying to use the law to recover custody, but that did not work well. More moms became, became part of the collective. Uh, most of them after filing a complaint against the father of their children because of sexual abuse. They had to fight against accusations regarding parent alienation and until the first 130 cases, we have been working to support them and in these proceedings, many mothers, 80 to 90 percent, have been effective, and the collective grew very fast, trying to provide support, guidance to the mothers. And today, coordinators have already dealt with more than 700 moms from all over the country more than 50% of the cases were uh, filed after uh, denouncing abuse against their children by their fathers. In some cases, when the complaint regarding domestic violence, the uh, change in custody favored uh, fathers in particular. Mothers uh, are usually being discriminated in these custody proceedings that involve uh, parental alienation. Since 2017, the collective has developed a, a protocol. There are more than 50 complaints filed in different organizations, Laden, Ludem, Conselho Superior, Defensoria Pública do Estado de São Paulo, and we have provided different decisions and evidence, and we have had a hearing, and we have also worked with the uh, attorney's office and requesting the immediate uh, repeal of the law and a change in the custody granted to their fathers. This parental alienation law has caused many children that have been taken violently from their mothers and they still suffer institutional violence. For example, there is a mother who has lost custody in 2016. The son was five years. She suffered violence invasion uh, in her home. They took her son he was in his pajamas and they granted custody to the accused and that mother never saw her son again she lost complete participation in the life of her son and that son that child doesn't have the opportunity to denounce any violence he may miss may be suffering that is what I wanted to say on behalf of all the mothers and uh, all our protocols are at the disposal of the commission. Sibeli, you have the floor now. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for the opportunity. I want mental alienation. She was under custody of the accused father. She was murdered 
by her father who was already accused of family violence. We want to recall two other children that have been murdered by the aggressor who had custody. This was a, fa a claim we filed before the CEDAL, and we have followed the Conselho Nacional de Saúde, uh, and we have requested the repeal of the law, but we did not make progress in this debate. And also the National Committee Against uh, Violence, uh, violence against children and adolescents, but we didn't make any progress. Mothers are accused of being alienators and have to uh, go through different treatments and uh, psychological treatment. There is also in 2022 a task force that was created for the development of a protocol. And we have also the Conselho Nacional de Psicologia, Psychology National Council, that uh, highlights that there is no scientific evidence to validate what this law states. There's a technical uh, note or report that points out that psychological science for human development take into account the imaginative declaration or of children. So any um, testimony provided by children cannot be taken into account. And in order to conclude, we need to repeal this law to ban this parental alienation concept for, to uh, impede more children from being murdered in our country. In order to respect our time and taking into account that the other organizations uh, have not joined the meeting in connection with this uh, topic, we understand that the repeal of the law is urgent and also the elimination of policies and programs that have affected the context of family protection. The rights of children and adolescents are directly affected with a criminalizing perspective, put it at risk the intervention of the judiciary. We have different proceedings that criminalize those that provide advice to the judiciary, such as psychologists when they are against that practice and uh, that practice uh, that is carried out through this law. And it is very important to look for other models that effectively can do away with controversies regarding family issues and not use this law that is using a false scientific basis. And this has to be repealed from the Brazilian national policy. I give back the floor to the president of the hearing. Thank you very much, uh, Carlos. <clears throat> and thank you so much to civil society for their fulsome submissions. <clears throat> Excuse me. I now invite the, the state of Brazil, a representative of the state of Brazil, to make their interventions. Thank you. 20 minutes. Muito obrigado, senhora presidente. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon to everyone. The state of Brazil would like to thank the civil society organizations that are here represented and the commission for the invitation to this hearing. The delegation of the state is represented by the following bodies, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Women, Ministry of Racial Equality, Ministry of Human Rights and Citizenship, and the Advocacia General da Unión. 
before giving the floor to the representatives of the bodies I have mentioned, we would like to highlight that this topic is very complex and is not restricted to the executive power, as it has been mentioned. There's a judiciary and a legislative power. So here we have the perspective of the federal government. This law continues to be debated in the uh, Brazilian state uh, as we are committed to guaranteeing human rights. I will now give the floor to the representative of the Ministry of Human Rights and Citizenship. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon to all the representatives of the Commission, civil society and the colleagues from the different ministries. I will make a statement regarding our position. Our, our national uh, secretary was not able to participate because he's uh, in a hearing uh, regarding adolescents here. The ministry through the uh, national secretary of the rights of children and adolescents seeks to present its perspective regarding law 2003-18 known as parental alienation law based on a technical uh, memo that has been drafted to justify the scientific basis for this law. This concept was created in the 80s by an American psychiatric that was working in within the judiciary uh, with families that were going through a custody proceeding. In Brazil, this is one of the only countries with specific regulation regarding parental alienation and there are few uh, academic contributions to this subject. The perspective of this law in which the parent or alienator is considered or the only cause of the problem establishes a linear cause and effect relation and it seems to be a person that executes orders independently of the uh, interference of third parties. We understand that children are able to develop a relationship with their parents through the different factors that uh, affect this relation. It is very important to have a comprehensive approach with the relatives in these legal proceedings, in particular, when it comes to divorce, with the perspective that not label uh, members of the families as accused, uh, such as parental alienation, and this should be analyzed in this hearing, taking into account the potential of this perspective. This may not be useful for the best interests of the children. In that regard, although we understand the creation of this legislation to guarantee the uh, best interest of the children when it comes to a moment of conflict between their parents, we believe that the use may exacerbate what it tried to prevent in the perspective of comprehensive protection of children or adolescents. This should be a guarantee if that it does not affect their development. The perspective of the conflict reduces the complexity of the general uh, well-being of the children as a result of the actions of the so-called alienators. And these may lead to a change in custody and a suspension of custody as it has been established in law 14340. It is very important to highlight that taking uh, children away, taking children away from their parents uh, to stay with uh, a parent with which it doesn't have a very tight relationship, that is a disadvantage of that law. 
sometimes children are punished as a result. And they have to produce evidence against their parents. And as a result, they affect their relation and affect, and this affects the best interest of the children. We also believe that the Statute of the Child and Adolescent 8069 can guarantee um, the prohibition of analogous behavior, uh, which is known as parental alienation. And this establishes guarantees of family power access to justice. And Article 189 also establishes the responsibility of the parents when there is a violation of the rights of the children. This statute establishes guarantees of protection for children and adolescents when there are threats or violations of their rights in the hands of their parents or it may be the case that there are controversial interpretations of uh, current law to 12.3.18. The Ministry of Ch Children and Adolescents is against parental alienation law and considers that it should be repealed as the best measure to be adopted by the Brazilian state and other measures may be adopted to comply with current uh, policies. For example, the Statute of the Child and Adolescence 8069 that has been passed 33 years ago. Grace Rosa, the Minister of Health. Thank you very much. Now, Grace Rosa from the Ministry of Health. Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, everybody present here. Thank you for the opportunity. The Secretary of the Ministry of Health approved the technical note elaborated by the law. So I created a summary of that technical memo so as to manifest the position of the Ministry of Health in relation to the law. In Brazil, we have the parental alienation. They were not an object of uh, analysis by people who studied this area. In fact, this text did not consider international law on custody of children, parental, um, custody, judicialization, and other topics related, other related topics. In spite the fact that the Medical Association considers that this parental alienation law may cause plenty of symptoms, there is no consensus on the uh, scientific con uh, community on this syndrome. Many people internationally speaking do not recognize that syndrome um, such as the European Society of Psychotherapy. And they uh, use this term as the reproduction of patriarchal patterns. This is quoted in the court because it is considered that it, it damages women in situation of women gender violence and this term does not serve the purpose it has and will not contribute to the health statistics the experts of human rights of the un 
uh, requested Brazil to increase their efforts so as to end with violence against women and girls and to put an end to the concept of parental alienation that um, other laws that punish mother and girls. Um, it is recognized that the uh, strategy of parental alienation was very much used by men against their um, spouses and children. And most of the cases used by of the law was in favor of men instead of women. As it was mentioned, we are against us, that law and there are not registers of other countries that have similar laws and it was approved in Brazil without discussing with the stakeholders involved in the issues. The Medicine Council, the Psychology Council, establishes that there is no scientific recognition of the uh, parental alienation syndrome. And there are several texts that prove these, that approach these um, withdrawal of this term without legal recognition. We would like to reiterate that Law number 14340 alters the original law and brings modifications that do not contemplate the claims of the civil society, who in the last few years have um, manifested a pronounced itself against this law. In the contrary, it produces, uh, it worsens the situation. So there is no uh, consensus on the medical community on the existence of the parental alienation syndrome and we think that it may even be worse and it re will result in the damage of the life of the women and children. The we manifest that the term of Parental alienation should not be no longer be used, and the repeal of the law to 12,318. Thank you, Ms. Rita Lima from the Ministry of Women. Good afternoon, everybody here. I would like also to read the president. We would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. And as it was recognized by the other representatives of the Brazilian state, the term parental alienation is a problem and lacks a scientific criteria from its conception. It is worrying that this topic was developed by a psychiatrist that devoted great part of their uh, practice and was obscured by several uh, abuse accusations. And it is even worse that these law is applied without a gender perspective. Instead of protecting coexistence, it re reinforces the reproduction of patriarchal patterns in the justice systems, and it generates institutional violence based in ge on gender. And it disregards the world of children and adolescents. It has also been uh, imposed more to maintain the relation with the fathers and they it forces the coexistence of uh, children with violent parents these this this makes it difficult to establish healthy links healthy ties with their children and this has been 
applied against mothers and it damages the rights of women, children and adolescents, women who complain against uh, violence perpetrators, perpetrators, these uh, ends up treating women as liars and it violates the different conventions signed by the Brazilian state. The Ministry of Women work of these bills that deal with this topic and that we want to reveal this uh, law. In both cases, the um, repeal of this law is acknowledged since it has created more problems. Women are being treated as alienating even when the violence the complaints are filed for a um, lack of evidence. That doesn't mean that the violence has not actually taken place. This, it is even more serious, the cases of separation or divorce that occur in a context of domestic or family violence. These conflicts should take into consideration the complexity of the family regulations and the it's not adequate to have a strategy based on parental alienation that a part of not being scientific, it promotes the uh, deepening of the dispute between the guardians. And this also implies the adoption of a posture which is patalization of uh, be human behaviors to punish the alienating uh, custodian parent who is frequently the mother, children and adolescents and women, especially those who are victims of violence. We understand that this war would not imply a legal vacuum in Brazil. The Brazilian regulation have several regulations that protect children and adolescents from uh, uh, damaging family environment, apart from having regulations that ensure the coexistence of women and men in the family environment. These international regulations on human rights and the civil cause should be applied we uh, express our solidarity with women who have been um, debating in Brazil and who have been damaged by parental alienation law. It's necessary to reparate the uh, damage that this law has caused to the rights of women and to children and adolescents. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the sake of time, the Brazilian state would like to close its presentation. Thank you. Thank you very, very much to the representatives of the state of Brazil. Um, I now uh, move to the commission and the members of its secretariat. And with that, I invite the country rapporteur, Commissioner Julissa Mantilla to make her interventions. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet my colleagues from the Secretariat and the Commission, the uh, state representatives the, and the civil society. First of all, I would like to say something. I think this is one of the few hearings where both parties seem to agree, at least in principle. The law of uh, parental alienation isn't a law that uh, benefits anyone. As Ms. Rita de Castro was saying, uh, the creator of this concept, Richard Gardner, in 1985, he killed himself afterwards. He was in a divorce trial. And it would be interesting to read the um, theories, the so-called theories about the sexual initiation of children. 
So from the very origin of the concept, it's a concept that doesn't recognize gender-based violence and does not contribute to the higher interest of, ch of children. Now, secondly, this syndrome can only be verified during legal proceedings. This is a syndrome that only appears in times of a report. That is why the WHO does not recognize it as a disorder, because it's activated when women uh, file their report. And thirdly, the, this leads us to a general reflection. And this is something where the um, commission can make a contribution in terms of technical cooperation, because the, the amount, the high amount of gender-based stereotypes in the law, the moment you report the abuse of the father, then all of a sudden, a syndrome appears all of a sudden. The stereotype of the woman who's lying before the poor little father, when statistically we know that the amount of false report is minimal here and everywhere. Secondly, I know that uh, Commissioner Arosemena is the specialist here, but in terms of the higher interest of children, the bond to an abusing parent will never contribute to the uh, respect of the higher interest of children. And there are many cases where girls, and if we're talking about this syndrome, let's also talk about vicarious violence, how children are used to abuse mothers. So I believe that we are and it, I think we all agree here, this, the next step, and this should be said, is revoking the law from the different entities of the state. I appreciate their being here because they roll against the concept. So is the civil society. And I want to remind us all, as Ms. Sibela Lemos was saying, Joanna Marcenal, the, this girl, this five-year-old girl who died because of a series of justice operators who followed misogynistic gender stereotypes that left her with her father and then she died. When we're talking about a context of anglo-centristic, androcentristic um, law with institutional violence, please tell me, and this is a rhetorical question, how can you legally install a concept with no scientific basis that has been proven to go against uh, women and the violence and it assists violence against children. I mean, this all facilitate, we should all facilitate the um, revoking of this law because with this concept, we are making women unable to file reports because we repeat that stereotype of lying women. There's no bigger stereotype than the one of the uh, lying, manipulating woman. So the state here has the possibility to live up to the expectations. So we believe that the commission can provide technical assistance to uh, help uh, end this scourge. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you very much, my sister Hulisa. I now call upon the Rapporteur on Children's Rights, the first vice president, um, my sister Esmeralda. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President. I would like to greet the representatives of the civil society and also the representatives of the state. As Commissioner Julissa Mantilla was saying, this is one of the few hearings where we all feel the hearing allows us to uh, find consensus between the state and the civil society. Commissioner Mantilla was uh, very uh, informative and convincing. I agree with her. I fully agree with her. But I would like to mention something about the importance of this act of revoking the law for Brazil. 
I believe that there was a reform, but in the end, this reform had a detrimental effect. I mean, I think that we were just listening about how this happened. We were just hearing about how this happened. And on behalf of what, for me, Brazil, Brazil made uh, raised a flag in the higher interest of children, giving an absolute priority to children, recognizing their rights, rights that were enshrined in the Convention of the Rights of Children. And it did so in such a way that it was the first country to have it in its constitution. So when we're talking about the almost 33 years, the 33rd anniversary of the statute for um, for child, children and adolescents, Brazil has always represented a beacon for us in this topic. So the approval of the law took place in 2010. The death of these children took place in 2010. And we know how this theory came up. And what I would like to tell the state is that we urge you to build this bridge of communication because if you feel that the commission can provide technical cooperation to propose uh, revoking the law and having new regulations that, as you pointed out, uh, wouldn't lead to a, a legal loophole because there is a law, I'm sorry, in the uh, rules of, uh, that allows us to, to use this. So it's important to see how the commission can cooperate and assist you in this. I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, my sister Esmeralda. I now call on my sister, Roberta, the second vice president of the Thank commission. Thank you very much. Um... President Macaulay, and good day to representatives of the state and representatives of civil society, and thank you for bringing this um, to our attention. I think everyone, I agree with Commissioner Mantia, this is a rare occasion where we have consensus of analysis, and everyone agrees that this parental alienation law reproduces gender inequalities, um, feeds into and reinforces, unfortunately, gender stereotypes within the justice system is used both as a sword to attack, uh, especially women who are um, seeking to live lives free from violence and also to secure their children lives free from violence. And it's also used as a shield to um, by those who use it to prevent a serious inquiry into violent behavior on their part. Um, so the, the, the law itself has created more problems than it has solved. Uh, what I want to know by way of statistics, a question, has there been any aggregation of statistics on how this law has been used and by whom? So a, sort of a, maybe a sex disaggregation, but other kinds of disaggregation. So we have a sense of who is using this, this, this legislation and in what circumstances. So that's the first question. Um, the second question, I, I don't want to ask any legal questions about the law because that might be to legitimize it, but I'm very much interested in how intention is interpreted in this law. We may not have time for that question. But my real question is, given the consensus here um, and the state representatives articulation and the need to repeal, what are the challenges to repeal in this law? It's, it's been on the book since 2010, I believe. So what is stopping the revocation of it? What are the challenges? And then how do you think the commission can help? Thank you. Thank you. President, without my- You are muted. 
uh, President, we cannot hear you. We think you are muted. Madam President, your microphone is... I was on and switched myself off. <laughs> uh, I am now inviting the Executive Secretary to intervene if you have any. Thank you, Madam President. And I would like to thank everyone here. It's an honor to be here at this hearing. That seems to be a, a bit of, uh, it, it seems to provide a, a bit of feminist vindication, but also presents criticism to certain uh, legal and legislative uh, positions. I would like to know the way in which this law is being applied in the legal system. Do the uh, representatives of the uh, civil society have any figures about rulings that may allow us, as Commissioner Rosamena was saying, to open a door so that we can provide technical cooperation to the state? I understand that the executive fully agrees with repealing this law. And I would like to ask the representatives of the executive to, if they can tell us which elements they um, know that are making it difficult for the state to repeal this. I suppose that there's a different position at the legislative branch, maybe the um, legal or the judiciary has a different position as well, but we would like to know which positions are making it difficult for the executive to have a stronger initiative towards repealing this law. We should remember that uh, the commission recently, well, not recently, about a year ago, opened its door or not the doors of the uh, Brazilian state to provide technical cooperation. And this could be a topic about which the UN system has talked about. And also the um, mechanism of experts of the Belém do Pará um, convention, they have all said that this perpetrates gender-based violence. So I would like to know about the experiences in the judiciary and the uh, challenges that executive branch is facing to repeal this law. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Madam Executive Secretary. I now invite Maria Claudia Polido, uh, the uh, Assistant Executive Secretary on monitoring, to intervene if you have any interventions, which I'm sure you do. Muchísimas gracias, señora Presidenta. Thank you very much, Madam President. Just to uh, supplement what uh, the commission and the secretary said, I would like to say that Article 2 of the American Convention establishes an obligation for the states who have undersigned it to adjust its domestic legislation to ensure the rights and the freedoms covered by the convention. So from that perspective, legally, it isn't just a requirement or a request from the civil society organizations that is fully backed by international human rights institutions and the Inter-American Commission, as has been just established. It's also an obligation of the Brazilian state. So once again, we offer the commission's technical support both from the uh, technical, the both rapporteurships, rapporteurship for women and from children and adolescents through all the resources the commission has. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, um, Maria Claudia. I now invite our special rapporteur on economic, social, cultural, and environmental rights, our sister Solidad, to intervene. Thank you so much, Madam President. Eh, boa tarde a todas e eh, todos. Vou falar em en, en espanhol, mas pelo menos dizer dizer hola em em sua língua. I will um, speak to speak in Spanish, but I wanted to say hello in your. I would like to make a short comment, and I have a question. When it comes to uh, my comment for our rapporteurship. This is an issue of, of concern in several countries across the region, not only in Brazil. 
And that's why this hearing is so important, not only for Brazil, but for the region as a whole. So I would like to congratulate the commission for arranging this hearing. And I also would like to say that this hearing is related to an alleged health or mental issue. And the mental health crisis that is already happening in the region is uh, present. And this includes the alleged parental alienation syndrome. And we know that uh, this syndrome is being discussed and addressed in several countries in the region. And we see that um, there is a lot of discussion. And we know that there are some movements that uh, call for considering this syndrome and lobby for this. So I would like to know what is happening in Brazil. We know that there are divisions, but we know that the health sector is against the application of this syndrome. So I would like to know what is happening in Brazil within the health sector, what they think, because this is related to the questions asked by my colleagues. Um, this syndrome is not included in the WHO classification of diseases. And I think that's something that we should consider in this discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Soledad. Um, I am going to go off script and ask our uh, expert, uh, uh, George Lima, if he wishes to make any comment. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. I will take advantage of the opportunity to say something very quick in the language of the country participating in this hearing. I think that the Commission has been following up this context mainly since 2018 when we received information about the cases affecting both women that are accused of parental alienation and the protection of the children involved in those cases. Within the commission, we have been discussing this uh, subject in our annual report and no in the country report about Brazil in connection to this subject. We are at your disposal to support the state. We would like to recall that we requested a series of meetings since last year with the executive secretary, and we wanted to um, recall that request so that we can provide support regarding the repeal of the law. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I am not going to repeat anything or go over time because everything has been said. And except this, that I thank the state for its frank and open position that it has taken in this hearing. We thank you sincerely for that. And as our, our sister Julissa said, this is not doesn't frequently happen. Um, in all the years I've been in the system, I think I have experienced about three or four, and that's many years. Uh, um, so I thank both sides, and I just enjoin the state um, to keep pushing for the repeal of this law because once the executive is of the political will to do so, it can do so. And, and, and I, we expect that we will hear from you in your replies to the specific things mentioned earlier. So I now invite civil society who has 12 minutes for their reply. President, eh, Madam President, 
I'd like to invite Natasha so that she can make a statement and then we will deal with both uh, questions asked to the civil society. Natasha? Can you hear us, Natasha? I'm here. If she's not here, I would like to call Anna. But Natasha, Natasha is there. Can you hear us, Natasha? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, we can hear Natasha. You can speak. You can speak, Natasha. I'm sorry. Good afternoon to everyone. I am a professor and communicator, but today I'm here as uh, someone who has survived um, pedophilia. I have assessed, analyzed this law as a communicator, I have created a campaign to repeal this law. And I would like to say that the defense of the best interest of children is only possible when we also defend motherhood. This law and the doctrine that is stated there, the LG protocol has used the mothers to accuse them and through the judiciary and the legislative power, they have defend aggressors. This can result in revenue for law firms. This describes, this law describes mothers as a hysteric persons that are seeking vengeance and affect children. This is an excuse to invalidate motherhood and keep children under patriarchal power. <laughs> The parental alienation law allows for children trafficking. Pedophilia is not an illness. It's not related to sexual orientation. This is something that has, be, has to be fought against. The fact that they describe women as programmed to biologically programmed to obey and men as beings that are biologically designed to domain. This is something that uh, per perpetrates uh, stereotypes that are based on the idea that women uh, do not have the same intellectual capacity, structuring them as victims of rape and domestic violence. And this is something that the judiciary and the legislative powers deal with. And it is something that leads to violence against children. This maintains the historical structural power of men over children and mothers. And this has to be uh, said out loud so that it is abolished. I will now give the floor to Yanka Yankarelli. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, in particular, for Esmeralda and Margaret. I've been working with the Commission since 2016. You may recall the fact, as Esmeralda said, that Brazil has been a pioneer acknowledging 
children as beings that, that uh, have rights and that subject has lost the right to have a mother. So they lose their mother. The parental alienation law is an ambush when it comes to filing a complaint against sexual abuse and domestic violence. The law legitimates incest, intrafamiliar abuse, pedophilia, and there are more videos, including babies that are being exploited in se sexual labor, and there are videos online, pedophilia online, and this shows how those videos are made at home. A baby is not the victim of a pedophile or because the baby doesn't go outside by himself. The baby is being sexually exploited in Brazil in, and the amount and number of videos is amazing. And there are children that are able to provide the only evidence available of the sexual abuse. A four-year-old child that says that when the penis of the father moves and when it moves, there is something wide that comes out. That is something, I'm sorry I'm saying this, but there is no way a child may say something like that. If you interrupt him and ask him something, it starts growing things. It's, there's no way a parent may tell the child to say something that he did not go through. Justice in Brazil has given these children that are being sexually abused and raped to their fathers, the aggressor, and mothers are moved away from their lives. I always ask how many times a four or five year old child says mom during one day. Many, many times he calls her his mother. He calls her all the time. And those children have been taken away that person, that maternal figure. And the consequences are not only psychological because it's hard to listen to a child telling about a sexual abuse. And that's uh, representative of justice that the uh, child is making things up and that leads to psychological damage to the children because they lose the capacity to develop trust. They cannot trust the person they love, which is their father. And then everything becomes very confusing when they say that the child is lying. Well, that child has gone through that. We should not forget that their development is affected by sexual abuse. And 
the parental alienation hides this, this covers and protects all uh, child abusers. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And Sibeli will conclude the participation of the civil society. I would like to mention two things. The Inter-American uh, Council for the Development of Women has developed a campaign in Latin America and the Caribbean uh, with the justice system and civil society actors. I would like to bring to this debate that the special rapporteur of the UN against uh, of violence against women and uh, girls has made reference to the parental alienation law regarding the damage it may cause to social relations. Take into account the question that Anna was asked regarding what is missing to repeal the law. It's important to recall that Brazil today has a national Congress that is very conservative and that things or cases related to gender uh, are resisted. And this hearing is very important to align the civil society and the state so that we understand that it's very important to repeal the law, but it's not enough to do that. It is necessary to establish a strategy to alter the institutional uh, environment context in Brazil regarding protection policies that can effectively change the uh, power of the alienation uh, center. The repeal is important, but it's important to have a strategy that may dismantle the structure of the Institute of Parental Alienation. I will now give the floor to Sibeli. I'm afraid you're out of time. So do you wish to ask for more time? And I would have to give the state that amount of time. Could you, could you, could you speak quickly, please? Time is a going. Do you wish to ask for more time? Gostaria de falar, Sim. se for possível. Sim. Yes, yes, I would like to speak. But for if how I may. much time? How much time? Sibeli? No máximo dois, um, dois minutos. Two dois minutes. minutes. Two minutes. Yes. So please proceed. I will give two minutes to the state as well. In Brazil, we have few researches regarding this. Uh, one of the authors is the coordinator or in the Universidade Federal of Rio Grande, we have uh, links that may be uh, accessed by you. This is available online and we have data regarding the use of the concept of uh, parental alienation against women in Brazil. We can also send these reports that have been created as a response to the uh, claim fight against CEDAL. And in connection with the legislative power, this is a challenge, the repeal of the law, because we have more than 50 bills, 15 bills that try to incorporate the concept of parental alienation. And we would like to call the attention on a bill that works on the criminalization of women that make false allegations of sexual abuse and that is very dangerous. There is someone who asked regarding health in general women are accused they, this affects their 
health and they have to go through psychological treatment, we can send all the information that is available in uh, Spanish and my research is also available in English. Thank you. Thank you. Terminamos, Presidente. Muito obrigado. Thank you very, very much to civil society for, for this and for bringing us, putting us fully into the picture. And thank you. We look forward to receiving the documents you referred to. I now invite the states to make their reply. Um, you have 14 minutes. Muito obrigado, Sra. President. Thank you, Madam President. We appreciate the consensus declared here. Uh, in spite of these, what we can do now is to try to strengthen the dialogue in the legislative branch, which is the one who can repeal this law, and we can strengthen the articulation with the judiciary, that is, who applies the law, who enforces the law, so that it can uh, apply it uh, differently but we are going to now give the floor to other bodies to the other agencies of the brazilian state i believe that the ministry of women was going to speak first okay what we can answer well there were many questions posed as to the data um, research that were done. Well, those research cannot be developed in Brazil because these processes uh, are generally confidential. So the access to the information to that information requires uh, an authorization for researchers. But we had access to an article that obtained 404 people um, tried in Bahia, Sao Paulo, Minas Gerais, and Rio Grande do Sul. In that research that analyzed 404 cases in which parental alienation was somehow brought as an argument to court, it was possible to identify that 63% of these authors were people that brought parental alienation to their defense were fathers, were uh, fathers, men without the custody of children, and mother without the custody of children represented only 19% of these cases. The rest of the the percent the rest of the percentages is related to grandparents who wanted the custody of the children but it is necessary to carry out further research on the topic and it's also important to um involve the judiciary so they can provide us information on those cases um, so as to treat those uh, data that are confidential according to Brazilian law. It is also important to say that the Ministry of Women has also participated of uh, debates with the ex legislative so as to think on strategies for the repeal of this law and these can happen to, together with the efforts of the rest of the colleagues here the endeavors of these colleagues and the ministry of women will now close its talk and will give the floor to the rest of the departments okay thank you now grace rosa from the ministry of health Okay, it was asked um, how this uh, syndrome works in Brazil or how it's, what's the term? Well, there are 
lack of studies, of statistics, of evidence that uh, just justify that syndrome and the Health National Council does not recognize that syndrome and is against this law. So the commitment that we can undertake um, is to train uh, and to introduce this topic with our health pro professionals so that this approach to the people that suffer that kind of situations are not uh, treated as uh, alienating parents. That's a commitment we can undertake in the Ministry of Health. And we would like to reinforce that there are no, in the protocols, there is no omission to the recognition of this syndrome. Thank you. Uh, the Ministry of Human Rights will also say something. No, we have already been covered. Okay, so the, therefore we close our intervention. I would like to thank for the participation and the engagement and the Brazilian state continues to deal with this topic and we hope this uh, law can be repealed soon. Thank you. Thank you so very much and um, especially to the state of Brazil for being so generous with their time. Um, I, I, I thank both parties who have appeared in this hearing for very much. Not um, in any small part to the fact that you both seem to have consensus at Edom as to the fact that this law ought not to exist. Uh, excuse me a moment. Um, Esmeralda, did I see you put your hand up? We're closing now. Mm -hmm. you, Gracias, you have to... una, you... Una cosa Thank muy... you, Madam President. Just one important okay. thing. Okay. As a result of this hearing, the rapporteurship for boys, girls, and adolescents it's, is working with the state of Brazil. We are uh, permanently communicating. We have a proposal for a visit. And I think that this should be an item that should be included in the agenda of that visit. So my request as since we have the technical team here, it would be great to establish this contact so that we can visit Brazil and we can have this opportunity to have meetings with institutions. I'm not talking about the legislative power, which is also important, but I would like to meet with all those institutions that work on the protection of children and with the ministries that are committed to guaranteeing the effectiveness of rights, both for women and boys, girls, and adolescents. So this intervention is to reaffirm our interest in, interest in conducting this visit to Brazil before my term is over. I love to go. Thank you, Madam President. Thank, thank you, <clears throat> thank you. I, I just, I just wanted to to suggest uh, a um, a matter that brought was brought up by Carlos, that since you are consensus at Edom on the fact that this law is not in the best interest of your women or children. In, in fact, it seems to me to be completely contrary to the best interests of a child. Uh, any child who finds it, themselves in a circumstance when that uh, um, the alienation is brought into play, uh, um, and the breakdown of, of a relationship. Uh, um, and uh, Carlos mentioned the fact that there ought to be 
a strategy um, um, to set up the strategy. And I agree with him, and I'm sure my colleagues do as well. And I'm suggesting that perhaps the state and civil society could get together to continue dialogue in this matter and, and to sort of try to do a think tank as to what strategies can be used and set in place to move the agenda for revoking this, this act. And, and also for fixing the other bills which have coiled uh, um, from the act, things which are clearly are not healthy to be put in, into law. Uh, um, and and do, do a thing tank and come out with as many strategies as you can to work towards it. And I think you ought to consider uh, seriously the, the, the request for a visit by my sister Esmeralda and her team. And I'm hoping I'll be in that team um, to watch the interests of uh, um, Afro-descendant um, women and older women generally. And uh, so that we can, we can really assure the female of the uh, population of Brazil that their interests are indeed an important matter for the state. And, and definitely, I know we all agree that we have to protect the children and their best interests at all times have to be paramount. With that, I say thank you again. And thank you very much to civil society and indeed to the state for your frankness. It's not often states are so frank and open. Thank you. And may God bless you all. Excuse me, Commissioner. I, yeah, um, I was just going to say, and I hope okay. we all survive the heat. Do go on. Yes. What was it you wanted to say? Madam <laughs> President, could we take a picture? Oh at gosh, the yes. end? thank you yeah. for reminding me. I forgot all about it. <laughs> Ok, so let me interrupt a little bit. Uh, boa tarde a todos. Se vocês puderem, por favor, é, ligar a câmera, que a gente faz uma imagenzinha aqui no final. So, could you turn on the camera so that we can take the picture? Só um minutinho, que eu tive que entrar pelo celular. Tá bem. Podemos ir? Can we take it? Lá. Segundo. Second page. Pronto. Muito obrigado a todos. Thank you. Reggie, thank you very much. Muito obrigado. I always think that in these pictures. Ciao, boa tarde. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Bye. Obrigada. Bye. Tchau. Tchau.